Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and today I will be carving a piece of this beautiful Sonoran Chrysocolla from Mexico. This material was donated to me by Blue Bead Trading Company LLC out of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. If you're interested in any of this material, give them a call. They're a mom-and-pop operation. They have a fantastic eye for gems and minerals. I've known them for a few years now. We vend at the Kino Electric Park during the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show together. Not only are these folks extremely knowledgeable about their material, but they also go out all around the country and rock hound their own material. They bless me with some of that material every year. Also, the pop of this mom and pop operation, Austin Guzman, is full of gem and mineral fun facts and information. I learn something from him every single time I talk to them. I highly suggest checking these folks out during the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, or perhaps if they have a website or something. Looks like it, a Facebook thingy. Also, if you're looking for anything in particular, feel free to hit these folks up. They are, they're just on it. Anyway, I have carved a piece of this beautiful material before, and I have definitely carved chrysocollas in the past, many different kinds. This material carves really well. It tends to be one of the harder chrysocollas that I've personally ever carved. These four pieces here were not given to me by Austin Guzman of Blue Bead Trading Company. This piece right here, though, even though it was not given to me by Austin, I believe it may be a piece of this Sonoran physical from Mexico. This piece I flattened out on a flat lap and then I threw in a tumbler. I think this is rocking at about 600 grit. No polish or anything, just just worked really well. This piece right here, I don't really remember where I got the material from, but it's a softer chrysocolla, perhaps right at the pinnacle of where I would say it's just too soft for jewelry. I had a bunch of this material and sold everything but this piece, braided up as a necklace, so can't argue with that, but I don't work this stuff into jewelry anymore. Now I just tumble it like this piece and sell it for the medicine, the love, and the beauty. Chrysocolla, as many of you folks may know, can have malachite inside. This lovely piece here was given to me by Lucky of the band Mindfulness out of Plainwell, Michigan. He hand-harvested this material in Arizona. Fantastic. Full of malachite. This material is also carvable, the stuff with the malachite in it. This piece also has malachite. I apologize, I don't have any water to wet anything for you folks. But I paid a, too much for this little sliver. I paid $3 for this little guy at the Tucson, no, excuse me, the Albuquerque Gem Show. Weighed it out on the scale and everything, and I knew it was going to be harsh. <laughs> but it is beautiful and collectible. I believe this may be Parrot Wing, also from Mexico. Highly collectible. Some chrysocollas are even worth more than some turquoises, such as this piece right here. Anyway. I really enjoy Chrysocolla. The piece that I carved live on Facebook, I sold, so I don't have to show you. But I can tell you that this stuff works really well, and I can also show you that it works really well. This Sonoran material comes in a wide variety, all of which is carvable. Even this white matrix stuff, or I don't know what's the matrix and where the Chrysocolla begins or ends or whatnot. Some of it looks like turquoise. It's beautiful. 
But all of it's carvable. I will leave most of it raw. I'll probably carve a few pieces to um, show off the variety. But right now I'm going to work this bad girl. I'm probably going to work most of this on my easy cab. I'm going to take this to my 80 grit wheel and then to 220, so on and so forth. Maybe take this to the 14,000 grit wheel if I don't just burnish it. Beautiful. Anyway. Again, check out Blue Bead. On to the easy cap. Alright folks, I'm here at the capping machine. I'm going to lick this larger surface and leave this back rough. It'll just be a windowed specimen. I'm really excited. I'm going to start on the 80 grit wheel. Alright folks, if you see there, it did lose a little bit of mass, not too much. My main goal was to get all of the pits out, the natural stuff, and then to slightly dome this while I did that, and to keep as much as the thin-sided areas as possible. I believe this red spot is metallic. It's pretty cool. I got everything, I believe. I don't see any pits anywhere. That's a good thing. I'm totally not worried about any of the facets on the face. Those will come out with the 220 and then with the 280. This material carves pretty darn easily. Definitely easier than quartz. Much harder than fluorite, though. Like I said before, the different chrysocolas can definitely have a different feel carving. That brighter all blue piece I showed earlier is much much softer than this material. Super lovely. Anyway, on to the 220. Alright folks, that was super fast. This piece is kind of rolling over, curving over. Which is cool, in a way it adds surface. Since this is a specimen, I don't mind it rolling over and it kind of just gives you more to look at. It's not jewelry. Anyway, that's wet. Here's dry, or drying, excuse me. It takes a while to dry, it's a, definitely a um, thirsty stone, but dries fast, uh, slower than other materials. Pretty pale when it's dry, absolutely stunning when it's wet. Alright, on the 280. All right, folks, just absolutely stunning. This is actually dry. It might be because there's metal inside of this that it takes such a nice polish at 280. Dry. I don't know, but this is, this is just stunning. Perhaps if I burnished it, it would look more like this. A lot more of the greens are really coming through. Not every stone is worth taking the time to show after every wheel, but this is just transforming for our eyes. I might have worked that 280 wheel, I don't know, two minutes tops, maybe less. I'm just flying on this bad girl. 
I carved a piece of chrysocolla that my good friend Lucky harvested. I did it as fast as I could, at the same time giving 110% effort into the finish. And it took me just about three minutes, burnish and all. This material works really fast, but definitely the Sonoran is hard enough to be made into jewelry. Onto the 600 grit. Alright folks, this is 600 grit dry, starting to get really glossy. I could leave this alone as is. Don't need to burnish it or anything. And it's a fantastic specimen. The back is a little wet, the raw material holds onto the moisture a lot easier than this material. Um, the finished material. If I was to burnish it right now, perhaps it would look more like this. But it'll probably look like that around 3000 grit. So it's going to get even better than that. But right now, on to the 1200. Alright, folks, check out this 1200 grit finish. Absolutely stunning. This is dry. Just fantastic. Would not need to go any further. If I was doing production, perhaps I would leave this at this finish. I am totally, totally impressed. At 1200 grit, it's totally mirror-like. It totally looks wet. I wonder how much darker it can get, even if it was wet. Oh yeah. It's got a, it's got some it's got some evolving to do still, but at 1200 grit, let me dry this off again for you folks. At 1200 grit, this bad girl is is a stunner. This looks really gemmy right here on the side, some gem chrysocolla perhaps. I'm not sure. I don't really know much about that, but it's, it's almost translucent right there. Certain spots are like pluming and slightly translucent within each other at 1200 grit, it's very noticeable. Boy oh boy. This is just exciting, every will has a story to tell with this stone. 3000 grit, then I will be taking this to 14,000 before I burnish it and then I will be leaving it at whichever one leaves the finer finish. Maybe I'll be doing both. But right now, 3,000. Alright, folks. At 3,000 grit, things become a lot more translucent with this fantastic material. The greens just become outrageous. If you look back in the video, there was hardly any noticeable greens. Now it's almost just like neon. What a stunning material. I could see why the Sonoran material is so particularly collectible. This red spot that I was guessing had metal just got a lot more darker in the last two wheels. Let's check this out. This is dry, and right, that spot right there is wet, of course, but that's wet, and the rest is dry, and let's check this out. It's almost, almost unnoticeable, the difference between wet and dry. Let's check that out again. Okay, so this is dry. Get a little bit. And that's wet. It just doesn't even want to stay wet. It rolls right off. What a good thing. Fantastic. Anyway, on to the 14,000 grit.
absolutely fantastic. All right, folks. Here's that beautiful material. I ended up hitting it with 14,000 grit, and then I licked it with the compound. The Fabuluster that I usually burnish stuff with. And it is just absolutely over-the-top glossy. Here's the back. Perhaps someone will have it on the table or something, and then they flip it over every once in a while, and bam! Love this jemmy spot over here. Thank you, Austin Guzman, and thank you, Blue Bee Trading Company, for making this episode possible. Thank you for, for donating this material. I know this particular Chrysocoa is quite collectible and can be pretty expensive. Blue Bee Trading Company had some of this material that had some intense druzies throughout it, on it, and in it, and such. Check them out. Check out their website. If you're ever in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, go check out the shop. If you're at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, the Kino Electric Park, come check them out in person. You can come hang out with me, too. Again, this material is harder than fluorite, softer than quartz. This particular variety is definitely suited for jewelry where this, I would say, is not. Anyway, this was way too much fun. Thank you so much, folks. This, this is Lapidary Dave. Love you and see you next time.